right, good morning again, and thank you all so much uh, for the coverage uh, that you have been uh, giving to our residents and our visitors during uh, this time as we uh, prepare and watch for Hurricane uh, Delta. I'm joined uh, this morning by my Director of Homeland Security, Colin Arnold, uh, Deputy CAO Ramsey Green of Infrastructure, and of course our Superintendent of the Sewage and Water Board, uh, Mr. Bob Turner. Uh, we're here, one, to just give you an update as uh, we just completed the Mayor's uh, briefing. Uh, Delta will most likely make landfall as a Category 3. Uh, however, we know that um, we have now been put on a tropical storm uh, warning list, meaning the City of New Orleans. Tropical storm watch for the City of New Orleans. Uh, the tropical storm force winds are possible uh, as early as Thursday, uh, leading into uh, Friday morning. Thursday evening, again, possibly Friday morning. Currently, uh, the city of New Orleans is outside of the cone, uh, but the impact uh, will still be significant and we're planning for that as well. While there is still you know, some level of uncertainty um, in terms of the exact intensity and the impacts, we know uh, that we're facing life-threatening, again, storm surge outside of the levee protection system uh, damaging winds is something that we're looking for as well. This will uh, you know, really have an impact on our trees, our vegetation, heavy rainfall, always something uh, that we're uh, con you know, not conscious of, but also wanting to be uh, you know, as risk adverse as possible. So being proactive, catch basins and the like, and possible tornadoes. Uh, this is something that, again, we have to be mindful uh, of and watch for. Uh, we stand ready and um, let me tell you align with our local uh, state and federal partners every step of the way a unified uh, command is in place uh, we want our residents to one just be vigilant uh, make sure that you have a plan to be prepared look out for yourselves your neighbors uh, as well as notify the city through uh, 311 if there are any catch basins that you want us to focus on sooner rather uh, than later. We clean catch basins all year long, but of course wanting to double down when we're in the midst of a storm coming our way. And so we need you to help us with that. Also, uh, remember to text DELTA to 888-777 for real-time updates from the City of New Orleans. I know we have over 100,000 uh, in that database right now. We gained about an additional 100 uh, over the past 24 hours. So people are listening and we just thank you for that. I'm going to ask now Colin Arnold uh, to come forth and to give you more updates associated with Tropical Storm Delta. But again, we do expect uh, her to make landfall as a hurricane, possibly category three. Colin? Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Office of Homeland Security Emergency Preparedness continues to monitor Hurricane Delta upstairs in the city's EFC. Obviously, there's uh, a lot of uh, time with this still to look at this. Uh, there's, a, there's still uncertainty. Uh, it appears that it's coming over the north uh, shore of the Yucatan Peninsula right now and actually entering the Gulf. All this time, we've been watching this as a Caribbean hurricane. Now we're going to see what happens in the Gulf. And, and what we've seen with with past hurricanes that tend to de-intensify. Obviously, this was a monster yesterday. It started de-intensifying before it hit the Yucatan and has dropped down to a Cat 2. It will re-intensify in the Gulf, and sometimes those hurricanes tend to spread out a little bit. And we are on the east side of this, even though, as the mayor mentioned, the latest uh, the latest advisory, we're, we're slightly out of the cone. Just be careful with the cone. It's, a, it's called the cone of error for a reason. You know, we, we can go either way. Um, left or right, and so we, we just have to be very careful right now, be, uh, primarily due to rainfall, you know, the potential for high winds, and, and really storm surge. Uh, and, and that right now, we are under a storm surge watch, uh, basically from, uh, you know, almost the entire Texas, Louisiana, uh, and Mississippi and Alabama coast uh, to, to Mobile. And so predicting right now about four to six feet of storm surge, so what we would say to our areas outside of levee protection, 
Phoenician Isles, Irish Bayou, Lake Catherine. This would be a time for a voluntary evacuation right now if you want to consider what's best for your family and your situation out there. Uh, this would be a time to start thinking about that. Now, if that changes and we start getting higher numbers, we'll work very closely with the Flood Protection Authority East uh, when they start talking about the potential for closing gates. They're not talking about that right now because the four to six foot mark has not really reached that uh, level, a sill level that they would use to close that gate. But four to six feet for us means water over the roads, potentially water in the neighborhoods to the point where your cars may flood uh, out in that area. So that could start as early as tomorrow. The majority of the impacts of this hurricane will be on Friday. And so you have time. I would say that we've been communicating with our state partners and the Red Cross with our guests uh, and, and our friends from Southwest Louisiana that are currently evacuated here from Hurricane Laura. That number today is down to about 5,600. Um, people are leaving and going back. That creates a little bit of a concern. But we just wanna make sure people know that if you're driving back between Southeast and Southwest Louisiana right now, be very careful. Particularly, we would probably recommend you don't do that on Friday uh, when this starts coming ashore. Um, you know, you, you just wanna be very, very careful with that movement along I-10 uh, between our Western state and Eastern state. It's just uh, you know, kind of common sense, but we wanna make sure everybody knows there's a hurricane that is coming that is going to affect uh, the, the entire coast of Louisiana and could affect New Orleans as well. Uh, in, in conjunction with the city council or in cooperation with the city council today, we did actually six sandbag locations. They're about wrapping up now. You may be able to get some sand at the locations. There was the Arthur Monday Center on the West Bank, Drive YMCA in Central City, Milne Recreation Center in Gentilly, uh, Maria Goretti Church on Crowder in the East, the Mid City Library on Canal Street, and then also Desire and Law in the Desire area. Uh, you may still be able to get some sand there. I heard they it went really well today, and we appreciate everyone's cooperation and patience with getting sandbags, and we know that that's important to people. We, uh, to be clear, are watching this very, very closely still. Uh, I, we're not out of the woods by any means as far as uh, the effects from this storm. We anticipate a full activation of the EOC on Friday morning. That may change based on what we see through the rest of today. Um, Again, we've been very lucky uh, thus far with five other tropical storm activations. This is the sixth, and I would just ask people to really pay attention. Text uh, Delta to 888-777. Follow us at Noah Ready, and you can find out about all these things at ready.noah.gov. Thank you, Don. I would like to pass it on to Ramsey Green, our deputy CAO of infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, doing these frequently now. Uh, the uh, city is working very closely with Sewage and Water Board to ensure our assets are coordinated and um, we're all working well, well together. All DPW maintenance trucks, most often we have folks out there pulling potholes, using asphalt, etc. Everybody is doing catch basins and drain lines right now. Look out for them. They're wearing PPE, they're on the sides of the road. Um, <clears throat> additionally, everybody who has got an active building permit, if you're a private uh, builder, you should be getting a communication tomorrow from safety and permits saying clean up your site, but please don't wait for that email. Clean up your job site, remove anything that's out there that could blow away and cause problems for your neighbor, um, for our drainage system, etc. All of our construction managers for our uh, massive rebuilding programs are notifying their um, contractors to secure their sites. If you are working a site where people we are in the middle of a pandemic, um, and you have to acknowledge um, that as you're on a construction site. Our inspectors are out there um, looking at both our public sector job sites and checking on our private ones. So make sure if you're a private uh, developer, you're doing that stuff the right way or a builder. Um, parking uh, neutral ground permissible after 6 p.m. today. Drive slowly when you go into those neutral grounds. They're beautiful. Please keep them that way. Um, and then when you drive out, the soil, grass may be a little wet, drive slowly. Uh, don't block any streetcar uh, tracks as well. Um, we have uh, a number of crews out from the parks and Parkways Department. If you see loose branches, call 311 now, report it now. We wanna do that now. We wanna clear anything that could fly around. On the sanitation side, no changes to trash delivery uh, until we say otherwise. Uh, 
go to NOAA Ready, we will report that. Um, but the uh, dump remains open, trash delivery remains as normal. Um, we're coordinating well with Entergy, Bob's team is coordinating well with Entergy. RTA is normal until an update comes from NOAA Ready. Um, same with the airport, but everybody's prepared, uh, working hard, and um, checking our generators, keeping all our assets uh, safe. Um, let me turn it over to Bob for details on sewage and water. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. I don't know what I did with my face mask. <laughs> I'm sorry. Apple, no, all right. I still touch it. Too. Got it. All right, we'll keep it. <laughs> Thanks, Ramsey. Um, so the first thing I want to do is give you a little bit of an update on status of our equipment. Um, again, as of yesterday, we had 98 of uh, 99 pumps, major drainage pumps that are in service and available for use. Uh, the one pump that is out is at Greenwich Pump Station number seven. Um, it serves uh, a portion of the Lakeview area. Um, today, we began the, uh, the testing of that pump under load. I expect some uh, news back on that sometime later on this afternoon. Uh, we expect, uh, we still fully expect to have that pump back in service before Friday, uh, and perhaps a little bit uh, sooner than that. Underpass pump stations, um, all of those are in pretty good shape. We have one pump out out of all those stations. That's at Press Street. Um, luckily, at that location, there are uh, three pumps at that uh, at the pump station, um, so we don't really anticipate any problems there. Uh, I will say this, however, you know, if we do get really heavy, heavy rains, um, regardless of the pump situation at the underpasses, there's always the possibility that we could get flooding there. I just want to remind people that as you approach those underpasses and when heavy rain has occurred, be careful. Don't drive into a, a flooded underpass. It's very dangerous, um, and more than likely you'll have to have somebody rescue you if, if, if that's the case. So please stay out of those. Um, and there are some alarms, uh, you know, ahead of those uh, underpasses to, to let you know if, if the water is too high. As far as power is concerned, um, turbines one, three, four, and six are available for service. Turbine three, however, as usual, is uh, emergency use only. Um, all five of our EMDs are operational, and uh, we intend to use those if uh, if the, the rain is, is heavy. Um, we, we know that's a little bit of an inconvenience to the neighborhood in that area. Um, we certainly apologize for that, um, but at the present time, you know, that is one of our go-to pieces of equipment, and we'll, we'll have to utilize that equipment to provide the, the power that's needed to drive those pumps, particularly in the old part of the city. Uh, something that I uh, spoke a little bit about yesterday was the new feeder that we have in place so that we can use turbine generator number six with our number one frequency changer at the Calvin Frequency Changer facility. Uh, it allows us to better utilize the capabilities of that turbine and provide a redundant backup system to Entergy, because normally Entergy supplies the six and seven power for that facility. So we're excited about that. Uh, we did some extensive testing of that feeder today, as well as the operating procedures that we put in place to make sure that we can safely do the required switching to utilize that feeder. Um, that exercise went very well, so that is in service uh, as of today. Um, as far as staffing is concerned, we, if, if, uh, if the situation arises where we have to man all of our stations, we have staff that can do that uh, on standby. So all of our essential personnel have been notified that we're to be on standby and we're developing rosters to take care of uh, manning those facilities, even the unmanned facilities if the need arises. Uh, we are conducting daily uh, emergency operations and preparedness meetings. Uh, we started that yesterday, that is ongoing. Uh, we've been coordinating with uh, our federal, state, and local partners um, and communicating with them uh, since yesterday. Uh, we've spoken to the uh, East uh, Authority, Flood Authority, uh, regarding the PCCP, all those new uh, permanent pump stations out at the lake. Uh, we have requested some mo maybe minor modifications to their operating procedures on that to give us a little bit of extra cushion with uh, our pumping ability. Um, and they have agreed to that, so we're in pretty good shape there as well. Um, 
And uh, I would like to say regarding social media, um, you can follow us on social media. Um, it's at SWB New Orleans. Um, and we were trying to get the, the status updated uh, almost in real time as to what the equipment status is uh, and any issues that we uh, find out about you know, across the system. So, so have a look at that and, and make, uh, make use of that as well. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Bob. And, you know, Bob is, and I'm excited too about the theater, uh, the improvements there, and that's actually tied to our hard work delivering fair share. And, and Bob mentioned on yesterday, it's been a long time coming, many years without that level of redundancy, fair share, paying off. Um, at any rate, Ms. Latanya, any questions and answers? Yes, ma'am. WPSU? Do you anticipate any evacuations? I know, I'm, I know you're only taking it hour by hour, and uh, what would be the game plan? Correct me if I'm wrong, I heard 5,600 of additional evacuees here, which, and yesterday, you know, it was a little bit higher than that, so just from yesterday and today, uh, it went down significantly in regards to those evacuees. Um, there, right now, uh, given the conditions and the pattern that uh, we're being forewarned about, it does not call for an evacuation of Orleans specific. What it does, um, it gives us a great, you know, pause as it relates to our areas outside of our levy protection system. And so when uh, Mr. Arnold mentioned a voluntary evacuation for our lower lining areas, it really is responding to that storm surge that we need to be uh, prepared for. So no evacuations expected currently? No evacuations are expected other than uh, potentially our lower lining areas. WWF? Uh, for Bob, you were talking about some changes to the gate that we have Oh yeah, come back up, Bob. Uh, proactive. Thank you, Mary. Um, sure. And so, uh, uh, particularly with the advent of the potential issue of the pump, I think it's pump station seven. Uh, we contacted the flood authority and asked them if they could modify their operating procedures, close those gates a little bit sooner than they normally would. And what that does for us, um, a couple of things. One is. Uh, Keeps, it's a, has the, we have the ability to keep the, the level of the water in the outfall canal to a lower level than the lake. And, and by doing that, we actually have increased pumping capacity. So the lower that we can keep that water in the canal, um, the more water we can pump through our existing pumps. So have they shut those gates now or the process of them? No, the, the trigger point is uh, three feet, elevation three feet in the lake. So three feet above sea level. And normally, I think the lake is around one and a half to two feet. Um, today, I think it was just under two feet. WWNO. The advocate. Um, I have a couple, but they're hopefully quick. Um, right now, what are y'all looking at in, in terms of rainfall totals? Um, and um, since y'all mentioned the concerns about the evacuees going back, where do things stand? Their ability to stay in the hotels or if they've left the hotels already to come back and, and get shelter here since obviously it's looking like it. Now being in, in midstream that's a little, a, little, a little tricky but we'll get to that but your first part was uh, rainfall totals. Rainfall, rainfall totals and Carla you can get me straight but I know uh, we were given anywhere between four to eight uh, but again you know looking at it closely and not it could be a, t a total of total weight over the entire um, uh, event, or of course it could be much uh, more rainfall in a shorter period of time. So we'll just have to continue to monitor that. And as it relates to our evacuees, just staying in constant communication uh, with our partners that are here on the ground, Red Cross and the like, uh, we know that the contractual obligations are in place you know, for those hotel leaders that are uh, servicing our evacuation population right now. Anything to add on that, Colin? So just one thing about the rainfall, last advisory was actually two to four inches. Uh, oh, over, less over than that. Period. However, 
I, I think we should stick with four to eight at this point. And you know, they always uh, weather service likes to say locally amounts double. So let, let's think about you know a heavy period of rainfall uh, over the next few days, certainly starting Thursday and continuing through Saturday, and potentially even I saw Sunday there's a you know, chance of rain as well. So it's one of those things that we just really have to watch. And again. Uh, you know, a training band, especially on the east side of this, if it broadens out like I discussed earlier, uh, you know, it, it, it could potentially give us some more issues with rainfall. And then uh, the reason we wanted to really keep the communication tight with the Red Cross and the state is for exactly what you're asking, which is we want to make sure typically when uh, it's been identified by the state that a person is ready to go home, meaning that their house has power and that it's, it's habitable, they give a 48-hour notice to, to go ahead and start exiting the hotel. Those are, to my knowledge, those are on hold right now. And I know that the state has stopped doing any of the bus transportation um, between here and Southwest Louisiana, at least through the end of the week until we get through this. And, and your question earlier, a lot of these 5,600 have vehicles. And so if there was something that had to happen, which we do not anticipate at this point, they would, they would you know, leave like anyone else would leave if they drive away. And so, but again, that's not anticipated right now. But that kind of brings up the point of, there is a somewhat of a look and leave going on right now, and we all remember that from uh, 2005. Uh, people are going and checking on their stuff uh, on a regular basis and coming back. And I would just say that the reason why I gave that caution earlier is, you know, that's fine maybe today and potentially tomorrow. I certainly wouldn't be doing that on Friday. Do you have any guidance from Joseph on, let's say someone evacuated, or someone went back to yesterday, now they're back in the crosshairs and might feel they need shelter again. Where, what, you know, what happens to new evacuees? Or well, we've been discussing that. Obviously, there is some more capacity on that side of the state now, but uh, as, as we have been doing since Laura uh, made landfall, you know, they can work through the state through 211 and come back to the city. And obviously, we went from 12,000 capacity now to 5,600. Some of those hotels now have emptied out. There's been consolidation. I, I'm not saying it would be an automatic that you would come back to New Orleans. That is not the right thing to do. Call 211. And then uh, from there, you'd be routed to another area of the state, potentially back here for a week. But I mean, obviously, we're looking at that through uh, not knowing exactly what's going to happen through the end of the week. Okay. Uh, WGNL followed by WWNL. Will the city be providing another round of sandbags tomorrow? No. No, the distribution uh, of sand for sandbags, that was executed this morning. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what we will provide during this particular event. In terms of the, um, what, what's the expected wind range right now? Like how, how gusty is it gonna get? And what, like, can you just describe like maybe Friday, Saturday, what we, what we can- Well, expect? I know that the wind has decreased. It was, it was, we were kind of, Warren was over 150 miles an hour and then it went down to 105, but now we're hovering anywhere over 39 to what, 75? He gave us a pretty pretty wide range, uh, but we just have to remain just watchful. Anything to add? So as of the, um, the 10 a.m. Uh, advisory, and again, it went a little west, which is good for us, but I, I again caution that We've got to watch this thing all the way in. We had about a one in 10 chance in the New Orleans area of experiencing hurricane force winds, okay, 75 mile, miles an hour or greater. We had about a six in 10 chance, so 60% chance of tropical storm force winds, which is 39 miles per hour uh, for an extended period of time. I've been looking at the hourlies that we're looking at through Thursday and Friday. Uh, Thursday, you're gonna start seeing winds up in the 20s to 25 mile an hour range. Uh, particularly Friday and Friday evening and overnight. Right now it's looking like, and again, this is their forecast, 40 mile an hour, 42 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts up to 50, 52 miles an hour. So again, uh, that can increase, it can decrease, but as a rule of thumb, the, um, or just as a, what we're seeing with the forecast right now is that Friday night, Friday evening to Friday night overnight period into Saturday morning is gonna be that chance where we're gonna get the rain and and again, that surge could start tomorrow, you know, because that, that is generated by winds that are way out there so, and, and continuing. So that's why we're you know, particularly looking at our areas outside of the protection. Thank you, Carl. Awesome.
then that, that made me think about RTA and think about Mr. Ed with his email. One uh, wanted to know when would RTA stop. And so RTA, based on uh, what we know about uh, this uh, storm, uh, we expect operations to continue. But of course, uh, anything 35 miles per hour over in terms of wind, uh, we will have to decommission service. But right now, um, plan for it to remain in operation. So anything else? Okay, thank you all again so much.